You would like to write an abstract for your research paper or thesis. But how should you structure the abstract? What needs to be included? Here you'll get all the answers. And now without further ado, welcome to Schreib. Many thanks to Scribber for sponsoring this video. More about Scribber later. The purpose of an abstract is to summarize your research in a short paragraph. The abstract serves as a guide for the reader as to what they can expect in the paper. It contains all the important information about the paper or thesis, such as the context, the research relevance and method, and also the main results of the paper. The abstract is kind of a mini version of a scientific work. It is important to understand that the abstract is not a teaser. Nothing should be hidden from the reader here, and there must not be a cliffhanger at the end. All the most important findings and contributions should be presented concisely. Hence, no artificial tension should be created. The reader's curiosity automatically results from the relevance of the topic. Especially in research articles, the abstract is one of the most important parts of a text. This is because it allows an interested reader to decide whether the results obtained or the content of the text are relevant. And not only to the reader. An article will also be indexed by databases such as Google Scholar based on the abstract. So make sure all important concepts appear in your abstract. Even if you are a student and have no interest in publishing your work whatsoever, your professors want you to come as close as possible to actual scientific work. Therefore, they ask you to write an abstract. There are no generally accepted standards for an abstract. In research, they result from the requirements of the publisher, at university from the requirements of your supervisor. If you are unsure, ask for the criteria in the next office hour or check the thesis requirements of your department. A typical abstract, however, is between 150 and 200 words. Although the criteria are not set in stone, there is a common practice of how an abstract is laid out. If you follow these seven steps, there is not much that can go wrong when writing your abstract. First, establish the context. One sentence. By context, I mean the real-world events that frame your scientific work. I will now give you an example for each step. At the end, we will have a complete abstract that connects all the steps with each other. All you need to do then is to transfer this example, or the logic of it, onto your own work. The example is from a paper by Sue and colleagues. So for the context sentence, one could write the following. Retweeting is the key mechanism for information diffusion in Twitter. Note that the key concepts are already mentioned. Retweeting, information diffusion and Twitter. Step 2. The relevance. Why is this topic relevant to your field? One sentence. This is where your argument practically begins. Why should anyone care about this topic? Anyone often means the researchers that are the potential audience of your work. But your work also has to be of societal or practical importance, in the best case. So for the relevant sentence, you could write the following. It, so retweeting, emerged as a simple yet powerful way of disseminating information in the Twitter social network. Step 3. The problem definition. What is your research problem? Two sentences. The research problem is often grounded in the scientific debate. What do we already know? And what do we not know? And why is that a problem? Why should we conduct research to address this problem? So for the problem definition, you could write the following. Even though a lot of information is shared on Twitter, little is known yet about how and why certain information spreads more widely than others. In this paper, we examine a number of features that might affect retweetability of tweets. Before we continue with step 4, let me just say a few words about the sponsor of this video, Scribber. If you are looking for a proofreading service or plagiarism check for your scientific work, I can wholeheartedly recommend the team at Scribber. Just have a look at scribber.com 
and send me a short email to info at shripe.eu for an exclusive coupon code. Step 4. The method. What method do you use to approach the problem? One sentence. The choice of method is linked precisely to the research problem. It is the tool you use to explore and address the problem. So for the method sentence, you could write the following. We gathered content and contextual features from 74 million tweets and used this data set to identify factors that are significantly associated with retweet rate. We also built a predictive retweet model. Step 5. The main results. What are the key findings of your work? Two sentences. Remember that the abstract is not a teaser but should include everything there is to know about the study. It is a challenge, but you should be able to summarize the essence of your results in two very concise sentences. So for the results, you could write the following. We found that, among content features, URLs and hashtags have strong relationships with retweetability. Among contextual features, the number of followers and followees, as well as the age of the account, seem to affect retweetability, while interestingly, the number of past tweets does not predict retweetability of a user's tweet. Step 6. Contributions. How can researchers, or in some cases practitioners, benefit from your work? One to two sentences. How would dealing with the research problem advance the knowledge? What part of the literature would it enrich and how? Theoretically? Methodologically? And how might possible findings help practice, for example, professional individuals or organizations? Here you need to sell your paper a little bit to the audience. For the contribution sentence or sentences, you could write, this research introduces a framework that explains the theoretical relationships between platform features and information diffusion on microblogging platforms. Moreover, this work informs the design of sense-making and analytics tools for social media streams. Step 7. Keywords. An abstract most often comes with keywords. Name three to five core concepts of your work. Those could be microblogging, Twitter, information diffusion, retweeting. If you stick to this structure, you will automatically have included all the important information in your abstract. In addition, you can easily use your introduction and adopt some of the sentences you have used there. Do not copy and paste them, but change the wording and grammar slightly. Also make sure that the abstract flows. You can use words such as therefore, hence, consequently, or moreover to connect your sentences and create one coherent piece. It couldn't be easier, could it?